team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog. Yo, what's good y'all? It's your boy Ant Hen Dog and we back to it. You know how we do it. How this homeless man became an NBA star. That's deep, man. Shout out to Jimmy Butler. He just got put out the playoffs, but he did his thing. I feel like he did as much as he possibly could. And he I was doubting him in game six. I was like, I think Boston is gonna come out and they're gonna win game six. And Jimmy Butler said, Ant. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm about to go for damn near 50, and I'm gonna take this series to seven. And that's what he did. Unfortunately, they didn't bring, they didn't get the win in game seven. Boston is on their way to the final. Shout out to Boston. Shout out to the Bird Gang. I know y'all gonna watch this video, but I can't take nothing from Jimmy Butler, man. Like it's very, very inspiring to see what Jimmy Butler did because I was always one of those guys that really wasn't like super just like thrilled with the talent of Jimmy Butler. Like he was never out there doing something that I was like, oh my God, like that is just like the most amazing move ever. But he always there, he's there when it counts, he's there when it matters. His his work ethic is crazy. Uh, his energy, his, his, his mindset was just different. It's, it is different. And I think that might got a lot to do with, you know, how he came up. Like the man was homeless, I had no clue. And we're gonna get into this video so they can kind of explain you know, his whole upbringing, but I had no clue he was homeless, but it makes sense. Like the way he plays the game, you definitely can see you know, that he didn't have an easy route in the NBA. And that because of that, he is the player he is. But before we get into this video, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure y'all like this video and go ahead and write something in the comments. Write what other videos y'all want me to react to. But yeah, let's get into this video, man. How this homeless man, AKA Jimmy Buckets, Jimmy Butler, became an NBA star. Let's get it. This man made it to the NBA, even though he was homeless. How could someone go from living on the street to signing $100 million deals mm. and becoming one of the NBA's biggest stars? Well, this is the story of Jimmy Buck. Jimmy's Jimmy. the last person you'd expect to have been homeless. Because he was just an innocent kid growing up in one of Texas's richest cities. But at just 13 years old, his life came crashing down. Out of nowhere. Jimmy's dad abandoned his family with no explanation. And since Jimmy looked just like the father that betrayed the family, Jimmy's mother just couldn't stand looking at his face. What? So eventually she snapped at Jimmy and said, I don't like the way you look. You gotta go. And kicked him to the streets. My mom kicked me out of my house to tell you the truth. I bounced in and out of guys' houses in high school. Now you'd think a teenager forced to figure out life for himself would be hard enough. But Jimmy's obstacles toward NBA stardom were about to get even harder. See, any day he couldn't crash at his friend's house, he'd just roam the streets. And being homeless in the Texas heat would be brutal for anybody, but especially Jimmy. And living like that forced him to make a life-changing decision. So I was always a big football fan, you know, being from Texas, football was big. I think basketball made me third. But then I wasn't a fan of the sun, wasn't a fan of the heat. Plus, I was tiny. Everybody else started growing. I was like, I don't want to get crushed. I'm going to move inside to the AC, shoot at the orange red. At the time, Jimmy didn't realize just how significant switching sports would become. But he wasted no time signing up for basketball at Tumball High School, where he vowed to become a star athlete. And during his senior year, Jimmy began his basketball career, which led him to making his new best friend, Jordan Leslie. But little did Jimmy know, they're about to become family. I mean, I was always like, man, you can stay, stay tonight. I, my mom won't care. And then I'd just be like, oh, just one more night. It was kind of developed into a week and then a month. Jimmy finally mm. found himself a permanent home. But more importantly... That's so real, man. Like, you need people like that in your life. Like, I always tell people, like, you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it alone. So shout out to, uh, I think his last name was Leslie. I don't remember what his first name was. I got a terrible memory. But shout out to him, man, because he didn't know. He had no clue who Jimmy Butler was going to end up being. He was just looking out for a friend. Like, it's this guy that I'm cool with that has nowhere to stay. Mom, can he stay for a day, a week, a month? Like, it's just, like, super cool to see, like, that he had no, 
nothing to gain from that. He wasn't like, you know what, this is going to be Jimmy Butler. And he's going to be uh, in the game seven against the Boston Celtics in 2022. Like, it was none of that. It was just, like I said, it was just helping out a friend. And everything comes back full circle. Now I'm sure Jimmy Butler is taking care of him. So it's, that's a super dope story, super cool story to see, man. Real ones. He felt love and support. Jimmy knew this family took a risk bringing a stranger into their lives. So he couldn't let them down. And for the first time in Jimmy's life, he had hope. His basketball days were only beginning, and yet he instantly set a goal most kids could only dream of, making the NBA. But Jimmy was determined, and that year the journey started off strong, because he committed to playing basketball for Tyler Junior College. I remember the first time walking down this bad baby, I know I ended the game with, with 33 points. And with that 33 points, I was asking myself, is this real? Can I really score 33 points on a nightly basis? And then the next time I came out, 35 points. So um, I knew that I belonged here. Uh, this is where it started for me. Now, I don't know about you, but dropping 30 points a night sounds good to me. But see, Jimmy was only dominating players in junior college and doing things at that level meant little to nothing. Jimmy knew if he wanted to accomplish his NBA dreams, he had to step up his game and be recruited to a top-ranked university. But right then and there, Jimmy realized his goals were even harder than he imagined. Because Jimmy already had a star teammate who was attracting scouts for himself. So with Jimmy knowing he had to compete with his own teammate for the spotlight, he began doubting he'd ever go pro. And I was like, man, can I really compete with the best of these guys? You know, if you pass the ball, you might not get the ball. Like everybody trying to get to the next level. Jimmy knew that with so much competition on the team, he already couldn't afford making a single mistake. Especially since his star teammate, who was already committed to Marquette University, was bringing in attention from coaches. And Jimmy knew Marquette's assistant coach, Buzz Williams, always showed up. So Jimmy was determined to make him realize they were choosing the wrong guy. Mm. Buzz came in, he was assistant at Marquette under Crean at the time. And he comes up to me, he's like, you know what, if I ever had a head coaching job, like, you would be a player that I would want to come, uh, you to come play for me. Now, even though Buzz wanted Jimmy to come to Marquette, everything had to fall into place. And one day out of nowhere, Jimmy's phone rang. I'm the first person he calls, like, he would always, he always had told me the truth and all of this. So, right. you know, without even visiting, I went to Marquette. It was official. Jimmy accomplished his first goal and was now heading to the University of Marquette. Mm. But this was just a small step in the right direction. Shout out to Buzz, man. He saw it before anybody else saw it. Like, he just was watching this this second person. Like, they said that, I don't know who the, who the first guy was. I'm sure, I'm sure I would know him if they said who his name was. But they said the guy, Buzz Williams, he was the assistant for Marquette. And they were already had a guy that they were recruiting on Jimmy Butler's Juco team. And that's why he was going to their, their games, just to see that guy that they was already recruiting or already uh, committed committed to the school. And he just so happened to see Jimmy Butler like, man, that's the guy that I really want. And he saw before everybody else. So shout out to Buzz Williams, man. Jimmy knew the competition here was fierce. The stakes were higher. And if he wanted to elevate to the next level, he couldn't be average. But even though Jimmy wanted to make the NBA, so did all of his new teammates. And the guy starting in front of him was already a star player on the NBA's radar, which led Jimmy to the biggest obstacle of his life. Jimmy panicked. He thought he would never get the playing time to prove himself. And well, he had to think fast. At the time, Marquette's starting guard was Wesley Matthews. Okay. And considering Wesley was an NBA prospect, Jimmy felt there was no way he could be better than Wesley and began feeling his NBA dream slipping away. But see, Jimmy wasn't recruited to Marquette for no reason. Coach Buzz knew the potential Jimmy had and forced him to work harder than all of his teammates. At times, Jimmy was forced to show up for extra drills at 5.30 in the morning. The workouts Jimmy pushed through were inhumane. But secretly, this was all a part of Coach Buzz's master plan to get Jimmy to the big league. Mm. He knew Jimmy's story and his goal of making the NBA. So Buzz wanted to be the reason he got there. But ironically, all that extra work nearly made Jimmy quit basketball. Like I was always like, I want, I want to come home. I want to transfer. Because like, he was so hard on me. Like I was so far away from home. You know, homesick. I'm still a kid. 
he wanted to go home because I was extremely difficult in coaching him because I thought that he could evolve into being a guy towards the end of the year that could help us. Jimmy didn't know it yet, but being pushed that hard was about to be his biggest blessing. Behind the scenes, he anxiously waited for an opportunity. But at the same time, Wesley was out there dominating, having the best season of his college career. Mm. So cause Wesley was on the rise, every single day, Jimmy was pushed to take his game to a whole new level. And I didn't really realize it, but Marquette, they had some guys on that team. They had the, um, what is his name? His last, it's Odom, uh, I forget. He ended up getting drafted by the Lakers, but his, his, they had him, they had Jimmy Butler, they had Jay Crowder, they had Vander Blue, Wesley Matthews, like those are all five NBA players. Like that's, they had a real squad and I think that probably helped Jimmy Butler uh, being around a bunch of people that all had the same goals and you know aspirations to make it to the league. And on top of that, Buzz Williams pushing him uh, to no end, like literally like pushing him to the point where he wanted to quit but it's like you're gonna you're gonna either quit or you're gonna become great. It's like one or the other, and obviously Jimmy Butler picked to not quit and become an NBA star. Until later that year, Wesley made his way into the NBA, leaving Marquette with an open starting spot. Everybody at Marquette knew Jimmy was doing everything he could to become their next leader, and now they blessed him with the opportunity. But even though his hard work finally paid off. Deep down, Jimmy wasn't confident he could be the next Wesley Matthews. At the time, not a single NBA team even acknowledged Jimmy, so he only had one year to raise his draft stock, otherwise his dream would be over. And right on cue, that's when Wesley came back around and gave Jimmy some life-changing advice. When Wesley Matthews came back and was like, yo, you can play in the league. I was like, where? And that's when I really started to take basketball for real, for real. Maybe I can be a pro at the yeah. highest level. Yeah. Not you're a pro, nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. But like the NBA, like that's where you want to be at. That's the best of the best. Right after Jimmy was convinced he could make the NBA, he knew it was now or never. That season, he came up with a chip on his shoulder, hitting game-winning shots and putting up over mm. 15 points a night. Jimmy even carried Marquette during March Madness, winning back-to-back -back games. But still, no matter what he accomplished, his goal was to go pro. So after his 2011 season, Jimmy took a leap of faith and declared for the NBA draft. But that's when things got scary. Because everybody was finally going to see if Jimmy's basketball career was over or just beginning. Good evening and welcome to NBA Draft presented by State Farm. Let's get ready to welcome them to the NBA family. The best of the best were here. All the country's top players Clay. from high school and college hoped their Kimber. dreams were about to come true. So Jimmy knew he had competition, but he still had faith that eventually his name would be called. And one by one, the picks came in. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. The Charlotte Bobcats select Kemba Walker. The Golden State Warriors select Clay Thompson. Mm. The Indiana Pacers select Kawhi Leonard. As teams made their selections, Jimmy's name was never called. Most teams saw him as a huge liability. After all, he wasn't a freak athlete, he wasn't fast, and he didn't throw down crazy highlights. So teams felt drafting him for what he could become was too risky. Nobody was willing to place that bet. Well, nobody until... With the 30th pick in the 2011 draft, the Chicago Bulls select Jimmy Butler from Marquette uh... University. Shout out to the Bulls, man. I was down in tears with my mom because all the people that tell me that I wouldn't amount to anything, that I wouldn't get my degree, I wouldn't go to college, I couldn't be an NBA player. But more than anything, it was I proved myself right. I could care less about proving them wrong. Now, with Jimmy officially becoming an NBA player, he realized just making the league actually wasn't the dream after all. Stay it was in just the a step towards an even bigger goal. Jimmy understood that going from homeless to a professional athlete was a blessing. So now being in a position to accomplish greatness and having the power to motivate millions of people, he vowed to give basketball his everything and make it known to the entire world that anything is possible. It's not enough for Jimmy Butler to be good. It's not enough for him to be an all-star. Jimmy Butler has greatness written all over him. 
He has got that dog in him. Trust me, he is clutch closer on defense and offense. He's as tough as they come. That's fire, man. That's, I love it. I love it. Let's get let's get Jimmy Butler a round of applause. I think it's so cool to just kind of this this is a this is a life lesson for y'all. He went from a junior college. Like people in junior colleges are not supposed to go to the NBA. Like that's not it's not normal. So he goes from that 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 junior college feel, just hoping to make the NBA. So now he got Stephen A. Smith and uh, Shannon Sharp and all these players, you know, saying he has greatness written all over him. We need him to be a superstar. Like, that's, that's crazy to me because that just goes to show, like, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And people are just going to fall in line. People are going to, if you, 10 years down the line, 10 years before that, Stephen A. Smith wouldn't have, wouldn't, wasn't talking about Jimmy Butler. He wasn't saying he had greatness written all over him. But because of the work that Jimmy Butler did, uh, just his mentality that, that, that got him into that position. Now he has the, the, some of the best, most famous analysts saying that he has greatness written all over him. But I appreciate y'all for watching. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if y'all haven't subscribed already. Shout out to the people that are still watching this video. You know, the people on YouTube, uh, attention span is terrible. So if you're still watching all the way up until now, shout out to you, man. You a real one. Uh, make sure you like this video if you like this video. And go ahead and write something in the comments. Write what other videos y'all want me to react to. But I appreciate y'all like always. We out.